Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me on today's episode. I'm glad you're here because today we're going to be working on a salami project that is so unique and so crazy that it could possibly be the world's most expensive salami. Let me show you what we did. A while back, we were working on a project where we dry aged a Wagyu strip loin with a marbling score of 7 plus using the sausage maker's dry aging steak wraps. And the end result was incredible. And at that very moment, I wondered what it would be like to take 60 day dry aged Wagyu beef and make a salami out of it. So one of the ingredients, Wagyu beef, marbling score seven plus. For the next ingredient, we're gonna be using duck prosciutto. And to make duck prosciutto, we're just gonna take our raw duck breasts, rub it in our cure mix, place it in a vacuum seal bag, and then put that in our refrigerator for a couple of weeks so that it can cure properly. And finally, we're going to be using the copa mussel from the Iberico pork. And the Iberico pork is known for its unique diet that mainly consists of acorns. And it gives the meat a wonderful, sweet, and slightly nutty flavor, which I think will go great in this particular salami. Our duck prosciutto has been cured, and now we're going to go ahead and process that. So I'm just going to rinse off the seasonings in this particular case, remove the skin, and then I'm just going to rough chop it so that we can have nice chunks of duck prosciutto inside of our salami, which I think will go great with the Iberico pork and the 60-day dry-aged Wagyu beef. <laughs> And now it's time to process the Wagyu beef. And what I did after dry aging in 60 days was I cut 12 ounce steaks from that strip loin and put them in vacuum seal bags. And what we're gonna do here in this project is take a couple of those semi-frozen steaks and get them ready for the grinder. And all I wanna do is cut them up into relatively manageable chunks. At this point, I'm just weighing out all my ingredients. I've got my Iberico pork, there's the duck prosciutto, the cured duck breasts, and now we're finally gonna add the ground 60-day Wagyu beef. This is at about 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Everything is nice and cold. We wanna keep it that way. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stick this back in the freezer while we prepare our ingredients and our starter culture. So back to the freezer, this is gonna go while we get our fennel pollen ready. Now this is one of my favorite ingredients, so different than fennel powder or actual fennel seed. We're gonna be using Instacure number two, powdered dextrose, that's gonna be food for the starter culture, and we're gonna be using some non-fat dry powdered milk, right? That's gonna help with the binding properties of our salami. And as we get our seasonings ready, check out the description box below if you want the recipe. One of the challenges that I had with this particular salami was balancing the flavors in such a way that one particular element didn't overpower the next. We're using some ingredients with some really powerful flavors. And our goal here is to create a salami in which all the flavors work with each other. This next ingredient is a black winter truffle, one of the most expensive mushrooms on the planet, and it's easy to overdo this ingredient. So we're gonna add just the right amount where we can accent our salami, but not overpower it. The aroma of a truffle is absolutely incredible. It's musky, pungent, almost garlicky, if you will. And the flavor, well, so hard to describe nutty and earthy. And I think that the combination of ingredients that we have in this particular recipe is going to work beautifully with the black winter truffle. Finally, the last ingredient is a little bit of Sambuca. We're going to stick with that fennel theme that we've got going on. And now it's time to prepare our starter culture. We're going to be using the flavor of Italy for this particular project because it produces amazing salami. And it's just an incredible starter culture. Great color, aroma, flavor. If you haven't had a chance to try it out, I highly suggest you do. So we're gonna let that rehydrate for 30 minutes. While that's rehydrating, we're also gonna rehydrate our 
casings, and we're just going to soak that in some lukewarm water. All right, now it's time to mix everything together. Our casings are rehydrated. Our starter culture is now finished. And as you can see here, I'm just using a stand mixer. My meat is chilled. All my ingredients are ready for me to just dump in. And we're going to go ahead and start with adding the Sambuca. Now, mixing your mincemeat is quite possibly one of the most important steps when making salami. If you don't mix it long enough or properly enough, you're not going to get that good binding property. Your salami can separate while it's drying. So you really want to make sure that you mix it well. And when you're done, your meat should be incredibly tacky. It should stick to your hands. Once it does that, you know you're ready to move on to the next step where you're going to stuff your casings as tight as you can. Now that my casings are stuffed, I'm just going to prick my salami, making sure I get any air pockets out, and then I'm going to brush them down with mold 600. That's Penicillium nalgiavensis. And now it's time to weigh our salami. This is how we're going to know when our salami is ready to eat. In this particular case, I'm going to jot down the green weight or the actual weight, and then I'm going to record a 40% weight loss because that's what my target weight is. I'm trying to lose 40% of the weight of the salami, and once that happens, it'll be ready to consume. Now that the preparation is finally over, it's time to ferment the salami. And all we're going to do is put it in a box where I can control the temperature and the humidity. A fermentation box can be as simple as an ice chest or a oven with a light on. It really doesn't matter. In my case, I'm using a smoker with a 100 watt light and a humidifier. And all of that's being controlled by these controllers. This is set to 85 degrees Fahrenheit and that controls the light. It turns it on and off as it's adjusting the temperature and the blue controller adjusts the humidity. So I have my humidifier plugged right to it. It's set at 90% and that turns the humidifier on or off. And I'm gonna wait for about 18 hours and I'm gonna check the pH. For Flavor of Italy, I'm targeting a 4.9 to a 5.2. I like the 4.9 range and I've nailed it. So we're now time to remove it from the fermentation chamber and transfer it to the drying chamber where it's gonna sit in a controlled environment, roughly 55 degrees Fahrenheit with about an 80% humidity. You're going to notice that during the fermentation process, a lot of things are going to happen to your salami in a very short period of time. The color is going to get very vibrant. The texture is going to firm up and the aroma is going to smell incredible. It's going to have a sweet fermented smell. And these are all the effects of the particular starter culture that you use when making salami. Now, once it's in the drying chamber, we're going to wait for 60 days. 60 days have now passed. The mold coverage is complete, the chamber smells amazing, and the salami is incredibly firm. If you happen to use a smaller diameter casing in your salami, then your salami isn't going to take as long, but roughly a 70 millimeter salami takes about 50 to 60 days, depending on your drying conditions. So once we pull it, we can immediately feel that it's nice and firm throughout. There's no soft spots. And now the big challenge is to see whether it dried evenly. If it dried evenly, there's going to be little to no dry ring in your salami. If the dry ring is bad enough, it's known as case hardening, where the outside dries faster than the inside, leaving the inside to rot. So let's go ahead and cut it open, remove the casing, cut it right down the middle and see what our salami looks like. Oh wow, I like that. Looks like it dried perfectly. And this is attributed to the conditions in the chamber. Airflow, humidity, temperature. The closer you can keep those within the right range, the better your salami is gonna be. And if you swing too far to the left or to the right, then that's when you get uneven drying. And sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to get it to that right place. But this is our finished product. And let's just recap. This has Iberico pork copa. This has 60 day dry aged Wagyu beef. This has black winter truffles, duck prosciutto, Sambuca fennel pollen. This is our salami. The smells emanating from the salami are sublime. 
It smells like fennel. It smells like dry-aged beef. It smells like duck prosciutto, but not one of them is overpowering. As I taste it, the flavor is incredible. Because we kept the spices simple, it brought the flavor out of all the other unique ingredients. The mold that we use gives it a nice, cheesy, funky quality. It's earthy and nutty. It's slightly sweet and beautifully fermented. In one word, this salami is splendiferous. Great big thank you goes to the patrons for making this video a possibility. If you like what we do and you want to support our work, visit our Patreon link in the description box below. And if you're new to the channel, I want to say welcome. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Click that little bell to get notified of all of our videos. We've got a deer salami on the horizon. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll see you soon.